Hello, everyone. Thanks, everyone, for coming along today to our discussion about sustainability. Uh, to give you a bit of context about um, the demos we're going to be giving today, um, even pre-COVID budgets have been generally getting tighter and tighter across all of R&E. Uh, within our member institutions and within the NRENs and Federation operators themselves as well. So JISC and AAF, the Australian Access Federation, we're certainly feeling this, and I'm sure it's been apparent to pretty much all of you as well. So on top of that, thanks to the wonders of COVID, we've seen the R&E sector suffer significant revenue shortfalls, and that's now working its way through to all of our budgets as well. So identifying new revenue streams has become even more important for underpinning future sustainability of everything we do. Um, in the UK, uh, a report from the IFS, the Institute of Fiscal Studies, showed that the overall losses within the UK for all aspects of the pandemic are going to be something around £11 billion, pounds, which is just a ridiculous amount of money. Within Australia, there's a, a conservative estimate of about 17,000 jobs lost within the r &E sector alone which is roughly 10% of the workforce and costs of about 16 billion Aussie dollars between 2020 and 2023. So this is hitting us hard. Um, if you have a look at the RefEd 2020 survey, we can see that most federations have a budget of less than about 100,000 euros um, per year, which when you think about it, you know, 100,000 euros doesn't go very far when you're looking at staff, overheads, infrastructure, licensing, support, marketing, and everything else that goes into the cost of operating federation. So today we are going to have a look at um, some of our experiences of two initiatives we've, um, we've been doing to help increase some, uh, some of our revenue to help fund our services and our plans. Um, and that's uh, within JISC and the AF. So we've been looking at monetizing the CDS, the Central Discovery Service, and Verified, our Affiliation Status Verification Service. So uh, when we look at Verified, we're also going to look at the non-financial benefits um, because they're also very interesting of um, some of the side benefits you get when you have such a service as a way of interacting with commercial partners and how you can benefit from that, um, uh, those side benefits as well. So uh, being very conscious that this demo session is pretty short, we've got a QA and a at the end uh, if you have any questions. Uh, and also feel free to grab any of us afterwards on you know, email or Slack or whatever. And we'll be ha more than happy to have a chat anytime. So kicking us off, uh, we are going to have a look at JISC's most recent initiative, which, as I said, is looking at um, generating a little bit of revenue through providing some carefully curated advertising on our CDS. So I'm going to hand over to Mark. Thanks, Rhys. Um, so the UK Federation Central Discovery Service, um, we receive a significant traffic from that highly sought after demographic, which is students. Um, at present, we have no way to incentivize members to use our own discovery service. And we also know there's lots of demand to target this desirable student audience with advertising, which could frankly generate passive income for the Federation. However, there are lots of concerns here. Um, how could the functionality of a page be impacted? Um, how can we ensure that there's only brand safe advertisers which are shown? Can we create user-centric experiences while addressing you know, our own financial behaviors and um, I'm sorry, financial goals and behaviors? Um, one of the first steps was obviously to define some clear rules and rationales about advertiser guidelines for us. For example, we agreed that if we move forward, it would have to be relevant offers to a predominantly student audience. It couldn't include any spammy takeover style banners or flashing images. It couldn't be open to real-time bidding platforms to ensure that we had full control over which advertisers are shown. And it couldn't utilize cookies to track students. They must click through on the offer and consent to that brand's own cookie policy for this to be taking place. Um, the next stage was to discuss um, demand with key partners. Is this of interest and why? How much would they pay? Um, do they agree to the rules and stipulations we've sat down? And as well as engaging commercial partners, we also wanted to understand whether the placement services um, could have benefits for promoting our own student services, um, like this health one here. Um, in the end, we decided to move into the testing phase with one of our student-facing services called Prospects, um, and they were targeting students with their career match campaign, quiz campaign. Um, 
what did it look like? Well, an end user um, looks to access Digimap. That's one of our um, global mapping databases. Um, and it's actually one of our largest users of this CDS. After clicking on and selecting SSO, they get taken to our central discovery service. Um, obviously, the MDI logo for the service provider is present, as are the usual discovery hints, the IDPs they previously used. The actual advert is at the bottom. If they do click the ad, it would normally open in a new tab. Obviously, this is um, subject to individual circumstances and customization of the browser. Um, so they haven't actually abandoned the user journey um, to the resource. Um, they, can, they can end up at the ad, they can open a new tab, or they could effectively end up at the resource. Um, both options are there. So the really crucial bit, what were the results? Um, in terms of functionality, there was no impact to page efficacy, dwell time stayed the same, and 302 redirects stayed the same. Ad engagement, we had low CTR in line with page function and use behaviors, decent registration and conversion rate, um, and potential to increase this with more attractive offers. Um, you know, 20% off trainers, half discount, to a streaming service, et cetera, are much more likely to bring a lot more hits. Um, we had no complaints, negative feedback from members or students, which um, you know, um, pleasantly surprised us. Uh, and we, we did invite it. Um, revenue potential, uh, we'd have made over 1,800 US dollars from the campaign on a 15 CPM um, US dollar um, basis. Um, it was entirely passive, no real effort required, and no detriment to the UX. And it puts us in a strong position now to take it to commercial market. And as a final comment on these results, rural advertising on the CDS has clearly been designed to bring in revenue for us. As you know, the important um, reasons Reese has described. A key tenant is it should in it should be a way of helping us raise the discovery bar. We're encouraging all our service providers to add client-sided discovery, seamless access, Wayfinder, et cetera. If in three years' time, no one uses the CDS and there is no one left to advertise to, then we will really consider it job done. If you have any more queries or would like to find out more about this process, feel free to get in touch. But for now, um, I'm handing over to John to tell us more about the AEF's experiments in Federation Sustainability by the Verified Service. Can we securely verify student status and find a way to increase revenue for federations? I'll let you in on a secret. We've been running Verified since October 2018 in Australia and we definitely can. The source of value is changing for federations. So going back five or 10 years, it was all about single sign-on. Other solutions have come along now and made that more ubiquitous. And the focus or the value that federations create is changing more to attributes and data and commercial organisations definitely have interest in the data that we have. So verification services provide benefits for both federation operators and discount providers alike. Firstly, for federations, it helps to resolve the tension between conflicting purposes. The AAF was set up like lots of other federations, primarily around research and education purposes. We didn't really give too much thought for um, commercial providers, but a number of them came along and they started to want to use the data that we provided. Verified provides a way of providing the information they need um, without disclosing any personally identifiable information. It's helped to generate a new revenue stream for the AAF and what's more that revenue has few strings attached so we can use it for many different purposes. Um, it doesn't have all the constraints attached to it that some other revenue sources do. Using the data within the Federation also helps to improve data quality. As you expose that data, as it gets used, it starts to uncover problems, uh, and that improves the quality of the data for all purposes within the Federation, not just for these commercial functions. Benefits for discount providers include significantly faster verification of student status. So that reduces their cost and it reduces card abandonment. It reduces their risk, so they're not storing and handling a whole lot of personally identifiable information that tends to come with document-based verification. And it also reduces fraud rates. So when discount providers use email-based verification means, um, there's estimates of between 30 and 35% of those transactions being fraudulent or the person that gets the discount isn't necessarily entitled to it. So let's have a look at a quick demo of how Verified works. Verified Global gives customers a seamless experience when verifying their employee or student identity. A smooth customer experience can increase sales and reduce cart abandonment. 
To customers, Verified Global looks like any other login process. Customers start their journey at your site, and rather than manually submitting documents, your site redirects them to Verified Global, where they consent to share their eligibility. The customer logs in with their username and password confirming their relationship with their organisation. Then, the organisation confirms the customer's relationship. This triggers a transfer of information from the organisation without disclosing any of the customer's personally identifiable information. The data is then sent securely to Verified Global. Verified Global checks the data from the organisation and bundles the details your service needs to complete the business transaction. The information about the customer's relationship with the organisation is then passed securely from Verified Global to your site. Once your site receives confirmation of the customer's eligibility, you can choose to grant access, apply a discount, or begin a workflow. With Verified Global, you can guarantee an easy and secure experience for your customers without sharing personally identifiable information. Connect to Verified Global with a simple integration and start verifying your customers today. Visit verified.global for more information. So this month across Australia and the UK, we've clocked up our three millionth verification. So there's a reliable service and there's definitely demand from the discount providers to use the service. So in terms of outcomes for Australia, we've recruited a senior developer and that person focuses mainly on innovation work that we struggled to get to before we had that role. In the UK, Verified Funds, two extra roles within the UK Access Management Federation. It's enabled them to do more proactive work around improving data quality, and it's helped to flush out a number of IDPs that were incorrectly configured, um, and it's provided extra motivation to, to get those um, configurations fixed and working properly. And once again, that improves the data quality for everyone. If you're interested in getting on board, there's three simple steps. Firstly, it's sign up to the agreement. You need to register verified as a service provider within your federation and then start receiving revenue. It's really as simple as that. So in summary, Verified's a proven technical solution with a proven business model attached to it. Um, it's successfully operating in Australia and the UK and we're now making it available to other federations if you're interested in getting on board. Commercial organisations want to access the data that we have available to us and we've seen from a recent example that if you don't provide a secure, reliable interface for them to get access to that data, they'll look for other means and we may be less pleased with the, the outcomes and the methods used in those circumstances. So whether it's in academia or verified, you need to consider using a um, student verification mechanism within your federation. Right, so thanks Mark and thanks John. Uh and thanks to everyone for joining us today for these, uh, uh, this little uh, demo. We hope those uh, demos have been interesting and thought-provoking um, and have given you some ideas for the potentially lean times ahead of all of us. Um, with regards Verified, I can't overstate how great it's been for the UK Fed. Taking up uh, AF Verified Global Solutions has been quick and easy for us because it's mostly outsourced to them. It's been super reliable. AF have been fantastic to work with. They're a great bunch of guys. Uh, it's had an existing set of commercial partners uh, who, because they've already integrated with Verified in other places, um, knew how to integrate straight away. So they got going from day one, essentially. And it then therefore presented us basically with instant revenue. Um, we've been running for just over a year now. We've done just over a million and a half verifications and our revenue is into the six figures at this point. So it's making a significant contribution into the running costs of the UK Fed. Um, we're more than happy to talk about the processes and hurdles we've had to jump through uh, on a one-to-one -one basis. Um, and that's with either of the things we've been discussing today. So at any point, feel free to just get in touch with us anytime. And uh, thank you. For